Jamie McCarthy. Thanks, Jeff. Yes, building up to the first race for the Battery Town Porsche GT3 Cup. Defending Series champion Shane Drake has uh, taken out it again uh, for a second consecutive year. Yeah, Beardy uh, certainly is uh, is on form at the moment, and uh, not only here in New Zealand, but also relaying that uh, form in Australia by leading the uh, Carrera Cup Championship over there as well after the first round in Adelaide. And uh, might add, he had a great run at the Melbourne Grand Prix, taking three out of the four wins. And the Australians, of course, running the new 997 cars, which are fantastic race cars. Still running the older style cars here in New Zealand, and that has been confirmed for next year as well. A, a good move in, in hindsight, that just uh, how many cars we've got running here in New Zealand? Oh, I think so just you know like being a smaller country I don't think we can jump as quickly as what uh, the Australians want us to and uh, those cars are quite different but uh, here we are we're uh, waiting for the start and as uh, Jeff said a very little amount of time in between these two guys and Beard actually gets the jump and Halliday comes back as they head into Repco Corner going to be very difficult as we've seen here so far this weekend and Halliday's going to make it stick oh, fantastic side by move. Side. Continuing the action from last year in the battle of the championship between these two. Halliday wins the jump down the back straight for the first time. No Fabian Conta this weekend. He's on V8 supercar duty. So in the placemaker's car is uh, former Australian Career Cup champion uh, Will Davidson. Uh, Alex Davidson problems here. Rob Steele. And Andrew Bagnell. Uh, on the placemakers, this is onto the back straight, but back up front, let's hope they don't cause... Oh, and a whole lot of uh, undercarriage or uh, bumper bar broke there. I'm not sure whose car that comes off. It's off the back of Rutherford's car by the looks of it, the Nichibo GT3. So it's Matt Halliday on lap number one. Replay coming up of the incident. Let's have a look here. This is further back down the field, down onto the back straights. That looked like Nick Gordon and Rob Steele got together, two of the uh, runners in the Class 2 championship. And poor old Andrew Bagner with nowhere to go into the side of Rob Steele's car. Another look at it here. Poor old Andrew Bagnell, uh, this is not the first time he's been involved in uh, someone else's accident this year. The uh, Holiday Shop uh, GT3. Obviously the cars are coming back around the same part of the track. There they are, off to the right. See all the radiator fluid there uh, on the left? Guys are going through it, not on a real vulnerable part of the track, but uh, I'd say that their uh, team guys back in the pit lane will be running them to be very careful in the continuing laps. But Halliday streaking away very fast off the start in the first couple of laps. Grace, and Alex Davidson back there in third, as we said, the Australian guest this weekend. And he's actually running second to Craig in, in Australia, so uh, uh, his uh, number of wins over there, he'll be looking to actually uh, try and uh, pull one back on Beardy back this way. Here's a replay. This is the debris coming out of the back of Ross Rutherford's car. A bit of the under tray from the uh, underneath of that car in the fourth position. Bit of contact there between Baird and Halliday. Down into the hold and hairpin as the field streams up over the top of Ford Mountain. Onto lap number three of 12. The first race of the weekend for the Battery Town Porsche GT3 Cup. Matt Halliday, fresh from his fourth place overall effort in the A1 GP Series. A fantastic effort. Here's Davidson in the placemaker's car onto the back straight. Just a little uh, glistening of the uh, radiator fluid back up front. Matt Halliday, Craig Beard. Beard in the, in the new 997s in Australia now have a sequential box. No anti-lock uh, brakes, so uh, you've got to be, uh, it's going back to real basics. Beard closes up under brakes into uh, Holden Hairpin. Just running over a little bit of that debris from Ross Rutherford's car earlier on on the first lap. Battles further back. Craig Baird was the top qualifier, just one one thousandth of a second ahead of Matt Halliday. And these two went at it, Hammer and Tong, for last year's championship. And more often than not, it ended in tears between these two. Well, interesting. I was talking to uh, both of these cars' crew uh, last night, and they actually thought it was the other way around in there uh, in qualifying. And here is Nick Gordon in the uh, Zintel car, newly purchased car for Nick. Uh, ex Peter Henry car, obviously pulling off a, uh, a wheel. There's some damage to uh, a guard or a Yeah, we've got a big accident. It sounds like I think we've got a big problem here on the front straight, just looking out the window. Oh, and there's a car over the fence. The this whole is unbelievable. Grandstand, the whole grandstand has gone up. That looks like Dean Fulford's car. This is a huge, huge accident at Pukekohe. This is just frightening. Look how far that car has gone into Tim Martin, That's one Tim, of the drivers Timmy Martin, involved. Yeah. His first appearance in the series, and you can see the damage sustained to that car. Here is the replay. This is frightening. Oh, that is incredible Look here. at the height, Dean Fulford. That's Dean Fulford. Yeah, he's just come out of a massive accident uh, at Taupo as well. 
He's actually gone clean over the fence, which they, if you've actually been to Pukeke recently and you see these fences, they uh, must be sort of like four to five metres high. And uh, to get up to that sort of height is incredible. I'm just hoping it hasn't actually grabbed uh, in, any of the spectators. There certainly well, wasn't a, a rush going on for people to, to get down there and, and help uh, people, but um, obviously the rescue queues got have got everything in hand. Someone just run across the track there. Obviously the red flags are out. The ambulance is on track. That is just a huge, huge accident and uh, the concern here at the moment for Dean Fulford, the safety crews and the ambulance officers just uh, checking out uh, getting over the fence now to the uh, Dean Fulford car, but uh, just coming back quickly. This is you know, such a difficult situation. But, uh, Dean Fulford had a fairly big accident at uh, Taupo late in the meeting in race number three, and that car was comprehensively damaged and uh, rebuilt over the last couple of weeks. A lot of work for the international motorsport team. Just trying to get a look in there to see whether Fulford's uh, coming to police uh, and Marshall's obviously waving uh, people back to police there very very quickly which is uh, something you don't see these days but uh, maybe things aren't quite as good as what uh, we'd like them to be down there I was trying to figure out how this could have happened Jamie and I, in, in a wider shot there I saw some marks on the grass that uh, sort of might indicate that that uh, he come together with another car coming over the hill lost control and uh, you know to be honest these cars go that fast down the straight they're probably doing the vicinity of uh, 200 and 20 miles an hour or something like that that he, he once he got the grass and sideways he could have got some air that lifted him on top of the fence and then up onto the uh, the net fence so amazing situation here at Pukekohe the rest of the field stopped on the start finish line you can see the debris down the left hand side of your screen as they come down the front straight So a delay to the Porsche GT3 Cup race after that sickening accident on the front straight to Dean Fulford. The medical authorities are there. The police are in attendance as well. Let's rejoin our commentators, Shane Drake and Jamie McCarthy. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, that was just a, a horrible, horrible, horrible accident. And uh, Shane Drake, it uh, does sound like they've got Dean out of the car, which is a very, very good sign. Yeah, we can see uh, glimpses there of uh, Dean on the stretcher. His helmet carried away. The fact that the helmet's come off is uh, also probably a pretty good sign as well. Yes, yeah, you did right. Uh, they don't tend to move, things like that. And, and look, let's look at the uh, positive side of things. These cars are probably one of the safest racing cars around. There's, there's the fist up. There's the fist up from Dean Fulford. That oh, is a great sign. He is waving stuff. to the crowd. That is uh, just a wonderful, wonderful sight. Confirmation that uh, Dean is OK. Well, Dean is a bit of a, uh, a funny character at the best of times and keen, always keen for a practical joke, so I'm glad he's uh, brought out some of his uh, uh, laughter and uh, good on you, boy. But I was just saying that the, the cars are immensely strong. They've got, uh, you know, you saw his helmet there and his hands the boss attached to it. As well, they've got a, a massive roll cage. They've got um, uh, special uh, wings on the side of the seats uh, to, to stop your head from flying out the side of the car and uh, in a side impact. So uh, there's Timmy Martin there, the control for Barker's car. One of the drivers involved in that incident. Could be ringing Dad, actually saying, Dad, I'm OK. Grant Smith there, the Porsche coordinator. Eric Wanders beside him, the technical officer. And that's not a good, uh, not a good look for Timmy because he's put, he's put, he's put all his financial money. Doesn't he? Here's the replay of what happened. It's underneath the bridge. And, uh, yeah, he just, what he actually could have done there, we didn't see the end of it. He could have rode over the front of the car. It looked as though they were sort of squeezing each other. And uh, Fulford's car looked as like it could have it rode the front of Tim's car and uh, then started the big barrel roll effect. So Dean Fulford uh, just getting loaded into the ambulance and uh, thankful that uh, Dean is conscious. Recently, Acknowledge the crowd and uh, great to see. Recently married uh, just a few weeks ago. The uh, what, what, put the hard word on another replay. Here we go. This is Fulford on the right, Tim Martin on the left. Timmy heading down towards the white line. It looks as though you, you see the car just go sideways there. 
and uh, it looked as though that Dean was coming over on the front of Tim's car. And this is the aftermath, up over the catchment fence. You know what that reminds me of, Jamie? It reminds me of the Owen Evans lighting direct car all those years ago in the speed record attempt. Um, that looked like that. I haven't seen anything like that in a long time, and that uh, sort of uh, brings back a few bad old memories, so to speak. Yeah, I know Owen Evans here this weekend, and uh, he will be concerned for Dean Fulford, one of the uh, lighting direct teammates over the years. And uh, this year is the 10th anniversary of Owen and Evans' uh, land speed record uh, success and uh, ensuing crash. So uh, well, We're getting word from the officials that uh, they might have to leave Fulford's car there for the day, I'd say. It'd uh, be a bit difficult to wait. That the race has been uh, red flagged and cancelled, for that matter, as the cars, we did see the cars heading back into the pits. The uh, rescue crews there, so look, they cleaned out the grandstand there. And we understand it's a full house here today, so there's probably going to be a couple of grumpy punters around that um, who paid their money waiting for a, a grandstand seat. Look at the damage to that lighting direct Porsche. It's just ripped the entire front end of the car away, and that car has received a, a lot of work over the last few weeks since Talpo uh, basically re rebuilt the rear of that car after the crash. Uh, at Talpo, so uh, I think the team's got a lot more work to do with that one, but uh, that one may not come back. Some lengthy delays uh, might uh, come through here because that, that fencing is going to have to be repaired. They won't let the race, other races start until that safe. As we've seen, it, uh, it sort of did its job, but uh, it's unusual to see a car go that high in the air. Something we see on very old movies that cars go into crowds, but uh, thank uh, Thank goodness that it hasn't actually uh, landed on anybody. Sitting up against the big front guardrail there, so we see. Yeah, very, very high-speed part of the track, and uh, Pukekohe is the fastest racetrack in Australasia, uh, Australasia, the fastest average speed, even faster than the likes of uh, Bathurst and Phillip Island. So it is a very, very unforgiving place. Ian Snellgrove uh, just run out of shot there. He's... Uh, FIA safety marshal, he's down there inspecting the place, making sure that it is going to be acceptable and safe to uh, continue this meeting. So uh, as Fulford's cars lays near in the crowd, we're uh, going to head back to Jeff. Well, wonderful to see that Dean Fulford was OK and waving to the crowd as he was being taken to the ambulance. Uh, the race has been called off and we will try to update uh, Dean Fulford's medical condition for you as the afternoon goes on. But wonderful to see him waving to the crowd as he was being taken to the ambulance. Well, stay with us on One Sport. The afternoon moves on now. We're talking V8 supercars. The big race is coming at 10 past three. In a moment, we highlight the top ten shootout. Spinning on loop, breathing this evening like I'm living anew. Saw this picture review, it's like you lifted. 